What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It is Wednesday morning on October 2nd, 2024, heading to my first service call of the day in West Hempstead on Long Island in the great state of New York. We have a residential client who has a Burnham Alpine modulating and condensing boiler. Uh, a few months ago, the they had a power surge and it took out a part on their boiler. So today we're going to install a surge protection device on that entire circuit. And uh, this service call and the video you're about to watch is going to be that installation documented step by step. So I uh, hope you stick around to watch the whole video and let me get your thoughts and feedback at the end in the comments section down below. All right, guys, let's get going. You're a big boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got him? You know he's friendly. Yeah, I know. I just want him to run as an escape. Yeah. How do you know he's friendly? You met him before. Yeah. Hi. You're a big doodle type of dog. I forgot what kind of doodle you, you were. Labradoodle. Labradoodle. When did you meet him? Last time he was here. Hi. Okay, we don't know each other like that. So no kisses. All right, I'm here for the ice maker filter and the surge protector. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Watch out, puppy. Tell me what you want to go downstairs? Okay. Uh, you can keep the door open, but I'm just going to close the door. Okay. No, there be light and there was light all right we got this burnham alpine 105 modulating condensing condensing boiler normally it's sitting on the wall but on this install it's on the floor on a couple of cinder blocks um over the summer the blower motor failed and they had no domestic hot water until they were able to save up enough money to replace this. So, at 105. So they had a power issue and we discussed installing a surge protection device. So here we have it. This is the uh, RSH50 by Rector Seal. It's good for 120 or 240 volts. Uh, this is a type one surge protector. So uh, this is good. It's got a lifetime warranty. It's good stuff. We normally install the ICM. I think it's the 518 surge protector, uh, but it's only rated for 240 volts. I need it 110 because that's what we're working with here. I'm going to install this probably on this box or quite possibly on this switch right here. And I may just do the switch. That way everything on this circuit is protected. So I'm gonna get my screwdriver, take this cover off. All right, I got the cover off. It's not every day you see electric tape on the, um, the terminals of the switch or receptacle. But some guy who installed this outlet box, the switch, I'm sorry, actually wrapped it with electric tape. And like I said, it's not something that you see every day. Look at that, crazy, right? So let's carefully remove 
that tape. And we are going to go kill the power to this switch. Hopefully there's a switch on top of the stairs. All right, power's off. Let's grab my needle nose. Let's grab that neutral. All right, let me take off the tape. I'm gonna grab my meter and we'll check for power here. All right, let's grab. I got that neutral here. Sorry, I got the line there. Ground. There's the neutral going to the appliance and there's our neutral coming in. I'm gonna break open that knockout right there and now the trick with these is that these long leads off of the surge protection device you want to make them as short as possible all right so make sure you cut off any access on them. Comes with a little uh, waterproof washer. I'm gonna put that on there because I wanna stay a little bit off of the box, otherwise my switch is not gonna go in easily. I'm also gonna take the opportunity now to cut those wires, my ground and my L1 and neutral. And if you're using the search protection device for 240 volts, this is going to be, the black leads are going to be L1, L2, doesn't matter. If you're using it for 110 volts, one's going to be line, the other one's going to be neutral. Okay, let's just strip off the insulation. Maybe it's a little bit more, and you can see they're not using copper conductors, but aluminum conductors there. And I'm actually going to repurpose some of the wirings that I cut off when I reconnect everything. So we're gonna keep those off to the side. Okay, let's mount this surge protection device. Let's go in here. And let's tighten it up. Beautiful. Let's just there you go. All right, that nut is in place. Here are my connections. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make some pigtails off of this receptacle. Sorry, this outlet. And I'm gonna take the green wire. I'm gonna make that my ground from the switch. And I'm gonna connect them to the other grounds. So let's do that first. I'm gonna take a, uh, maybe a spade connector to uh, connect that to there, cause it's, since it's stranded wire. Okay. Crimper. And let's. Beautiful. Okay. That's going to be our ground. So let's connect that to our switch right now. Beautiful. Okay. Now let's take some of the extra black and let's make a pigtail for the switch. All right, so my 
pigtail for power to the switch is wired. My ground is wired. Now I have to just connect all the wires. So the greens are gonna go together. The neutral, neutral, and one of these gonna go together. And then the blacks for line. Line, there are other remaining black off of the surge protection device. And then going to the switch, of course. So let's cut these back a little shorter. Don't get them so long. So we have our neutral. Let's make sure that these are a nice good length. Perfect. Let's take a, a Wago lever connector 221 with a three conductor. Let's get one neutral in there. Let's get our other neutral, sorry, our other ground, and then the ground from the switch, the pigtail that I made. So that's all then. Actually, you know what? I need a one, two, three, four. Four conductor, not three. Four. Oops. So we don't have a four, we have a five. Let's connect that one there. Let's get this one. In there. Now we have this ground. And last but not least, the ground from the surge protection device. Okay. That's all of those. Let's get this pushed into the back, like so. Okay, now we have one, two, three neutrals. So now we can use our three conductor Wago, one there. Let's use one of these. And then our neutral. Beautiful. Okay. Let's just get this out of the way there. Perfect. Let's push this into a little discreet corner inside of our box. Because we have to have enough room to push this receptacle in. Okay. Now we have one, two, and three. So let's cut that back a little bit. Let's strip off a little wire there. And I'm showing step by step just to show you guys that it's quite simple to do this. And if you have some mechanical ability, you could save yourself an expense of hiring an electrician or hiring your HVAC guy to install a surge protection device on your equipment. What's great about having something like this is that you do have that power surge. Uh, it's not going to take out. It's not going to take out your equipment. It will take out the surge protection device before that, and that really is invaluable. Imagine the winter, and you get a power surge, and it takes out your uh, your heating equipment like your furnace or your boiler. All right, I don't know about you, but my wife would would murder me, <laughs> seriously. Okay, get that one back in there, perfect. There we go. And, beautiful. Okay, make sure that off is with the toggle pointing down. Let's get that switch cover back on with the flat slotted screwdriver. I'm 
going to uh, I'm gonna leave this off first. I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna kill the light. I'm gonna turn the power on the top of the stairs. See, nothing blew up. Okay, the switch turns off power to the equipment. The surge protection device is still active. Okay, the three zone switching relay gets powered. The boiler's powered. And now we are protected. Beautiful. Another thing what's great about the Rector Seal, the RSH-50. By the way, not a sponsor of the channel. I just happen to love these. They're compact and especially since I needed a 110 volt model. They had the uh, the win. The, um, the warranty, if you read the fine print, for a period of five years, if you properly have their surge protection device installed uh, and it gets damaged as a result of a surge, uh, a surge power surge, RectiSeal, the manufacturer at their discretion, will make a uh, repair or replacement of that equipment. Quote, Quote, manufacturer will, at its sole discretion, for a period of five years, from the date of installation, repair or replace heating, ventilation, and air conditioning equipment that is damaged as a result of SPD failure during a surge event. Pretty cool, right? But it's a period of five years from the date of installation. Pretty cool. There's all the fine print. If you want to pause, knock yourself out. And if you have any questions, you can call that number right there.